I slept well this night because I had the AC on. And my girlfriend Ida was watching videos on YouTube the whole day because the notebook was connected to the electricity. And my friend Danny plugged his phone on the electricity to use his telephone the whole day. What these activities have in common with each other? The electricity. And one of the best ways to have clean energy is using water. But water has no power in small quantities. But water has a lot of power in big quantities. And the power of water can be so big that it can bring energy for a whole country. Now imagine the power of water, not just on a minor level, but on a massive scale. That's exactly what our Backpacker Hero tracked all the way down to Paraná, Brazil to check out. The biggest hydroelectric plant in the world! Welcome to the Itaipu plant, the biggest plant in the world, right here in Brazil. Another mind-boggling fact about this damn, damn hydro plant is that it's so massive that it can be seen from space. That's right, this hydroelectric powerhouse can be spotted from orbit. Now let's go back to our backpacker hero! And we're really lucky to see this right now because these doors are open just a few times a year. They only open this when it rains too much in this region, when the water levels are too high up. Like two or three times a year they open this. And this much water can be 40 times more. My friend, this water plant belongs to two countries, not only Brazil. Brazil is just 50% and Paraguay is another 50%. So you ask me how they made a huge plant like this in a river that is 60 meters deep. So first, this is the main river. They couldn't build a plant with the water passing there. So they made a second river, like a second channel uh, of the river, like passing through here. And they made two big concrete walls, one here in the beginning and one like there in the end so the water couldn't pass. And with that, they made the first part of the plant, this part right there. And after they made this first part, they made a control explosion on the concrete walls, so the river started passing on the second channel. And then that part of the river was completely dry. And then they started to build the second part of the plant, that part over there that you can see. And then that's how this big plant was built. But the most interesting part is that all of this work was made in 10 years. That's not a lot of time. That's only 10 years. And another interesting part, do you see this little waterfall that's actually big? This part, it doesn't have the same function of the big waterfall. This is actually to cool down the engine. It needs to be 60 degrees always, like a car engine. It needs to be like 60 degrees average. So this is the same. The water comes from the river up there, stay stocked in a storage in there, and then it goes back to the river from the waterfall that you can see right now. And do you see this part on the top of the plant? I'm here right now. Well, I'm here on the top of the plant. All right, are you ready? Damn. Do you see this black part right here? After this dark part, you can see 80 meters down. And then it's the river. Okay, but how does it work? The water enters through the conduits and is directed towards the dam's massive turbines. These turbines convert the mechanical energy generated by the falling water into electrical energy. This electricity is then transmitted through power lines to power plants in cities like Furnas and Sao Paulo, which is over 600 miles away. The whole process is so efficient that if you open Google Earth, you can see the power lines running in a straight line on the map, linking the dam to the damn cities. So we put the helmets on and we enter this universe. Do you hear this noise? Man, this is a very powerful duct, water duct. In this duct passes the half of the Cataratas do Iguaçu and there's 20 of them in this plant. We are here now inside the structure and there is a lot of concrete. So what this plant has to do with the biggest ice factory in the South America? To make concrete like this, you need to mix concrete with water. But this city is very hot, it's very warm. It can get to 40 degrees during the day. So instead of mixing with water, that can cause bubbles and some chemical reactions that's not good for the concrete, they used to mix with cold ice. So they created the biggest ice factory in South America. And this ice factory used to fabricate 52 tons of ice per hour. The turbine 
was so loud I'll have to narrate this part as well. As you can see, this is one of the turbines that generates electricity from the falling water. And you may also notice the alley is shaking just like those walls. That's because there's half the volume of Iguazu Falls passing through that conduit. And that is the power that's making the walls tremble. So imagine the sound of this much power running through those turbines. It's not easy to stand that close. And this part is the heart of the Itaipu plant. So this part is from Brazil and this part is Paraguay. And as you can see, in the heart of the Itaipu, you have this room with all the machines, like all the, the computers. And everything was like very old, like very Russian uh, architecture and, and ma machines. And now everything is on the, on the computer. So everything is like, everything now is digital. You can see on the, the screen and they control all the plants here in this room, like what they're gonna turn off, what they're gonna turn on, uh, what's going on in the inside here. So you might be wondering, just how much power are we talking about here? Well, let me tell you, this place generates enough electricity to power an entire country, Paraguay, and supplies a whopping 17% of Brazil's energy needs. <laughs> And another interesting fact is that Brazil is the country with the most fresh water in the world. Brazil is just amazing and drink water every day.